These are some of the pertinent questions you have to ask if you plan the activities that you have what you call uh, associate with collaborations. Huh? So the pertinent question is that, is this working together? So now for example, if you have a case of students giving each other feedback, does this mean uh, what you call working together? I think it's yes, is it? So you just try to ask this type of question, then you will know whether it conforms or whether it can answer the questions asked or not. So, so for, for the first question, pairs of students give each other feedback, so you will consider it as working together. Then a small group discusses an issue together. So this one also yes. Then you have student uses Skype to interview a student in another town via the internet. This one also yes. Then come to student do their work alone. So this one, they are not working together, is it? So this one, no. And then a whole class discusses an issue, whole class. So they want this one also, no what? Uh, okay, and then each student create his or her own story and send it to the educator for feedback. This one also no. There's no collaboration there. So when when you plan your activity, you try to ask questions like that, whether it conforms to them or not. So after that, then you let us skip a few so that you can see. Okay. This is the rubrics that I am giving. Uh, so first, is it students are required to work in pairs or not? If yes, then you what you call go through the first stage. Then you have a score that if no, that means your score is one only. That means the collaboration level is low. So if you check through, then you finally reach four or five. Then that means the collaboration level is high. Okay. So let's go back. So next question to ask is that, is this shared responsibility? So students conduct a lab experiment together. So it's shared responsibility, is it? So next will be, students work with a peer in another country to develop a joint website using Microsoft Office. This one also, yes. And then students give each other feedback. Mm -hmm. So they give each other feedback only. Does it carry any shared responsibility or not? No, is it? <coughs> then, next one will be a student interview appears in another country about local weather. Interview, nothing done, no responsibility there. So, okay, so you just check out one by one like that. So, next will be is this a substantive decision? So, students in team are preparing for debate and must decide what side of the issue they will argue for. So they have to make substantive decision, decision is it? So next, <coughs> pairs of students are developing a presentation about climate change and must decide what causes to write about. So the key word here is the decision there, okay? Student teams are conducting a research project and must decide on their own for plan and roles on the team. So pairs of students decide on how to shape their presentation to a particular audience. So you see the keyword there. So this will confirm that it needs to make substantive decisions. Next question. Students work together to identify capital cities of a particular country in Asia. So this one, no decision make, is it? So next, pairs of students choose which animal they will study. Also, no, no substantive decision make. Pairs of students select a color scheme for their presentation. And also, so next question will be, is student work interdependent? So group members each research a different internal system of a group. Students then work together to discuss a frog and write a lab report about the dissection, identifying frog parts and system to which they belong. So they are working interdependently. Okay? So students each use their own network device to contribute coordinate points that must 
collectively create the shape of the star. So collectively, that means it depends on each other. Okay? Students create a tourist website presenting the history, culture, attraction and the competition of their local area. So this one is yes, huh? then next one, group members work together to research from but each student conduct their own dissection and write their own report. There is no interdependency there. Okay? So one student uses a device to plot coordinates point and create a star shape with input from other group. So one student doing the work, okay? Although they get the things from the group members. Okay? Students each create a web page about the history, culture, attraction or accommodation of their local area that will be linked to a classroom page. So this one they create on their own. Each create their own web page. So there is no Interdependency. Okay, as I say, after you have planned out your activity, you can use this rubric to check what level of collaboration does your activities belong to. So, of course, the higher the uh, what you call the score will be better. Okay, so we work until students work is interdependent. Okay, this is how you use your rubrics. So. So we have all together six, but sometimes your activity may have high collaboration and then may have another low one on the other dimension. So it must not necessarily that everything must be high. It all depends on your objective of your lessons or your activities. Okay? So, so next we will look at use of ICT for learning. Eh? So these are the pertinent questions to ask. Are students passive consumers of ICT, active user of ICT or designer of an ICT product for an authentic audience? Okay? So, so these are the questions. Do these students use ICT? Students complete a max learning activity by using Excel spreadsheet software. Yes. Students learn about self-replication by using software simulation to explore the process. Yes. Students use Microsoft OneNote to edit their writing, tracking their changes as they go. Yes or so? Then the next question. Students complete a max learning activity by using worksheet that educator has printed out from the computer. It's not using ICT, is it? Just use the traditional paper and do the answering thing. Okay? <coughs> then students learn about self-application by watching the educator demonstrate a software simulation of the process. They are not running the simulation, they are watching the simulation. So we classify it as they are not using ICT. Right? So the educator uses Microsoft OneNote to make and track suggest changes to the student writing. So the educator uses only not the student uses. Okay? So the difference is that. So next question will be Do these students use ICT support knowledge construction? So students use Excel. Spreadsheet software to analyze result of an experiment? Yes, they use it to support knowledge constructors. Students use computer based simulation to investigate how stars are formed. So, yes, students write an essay on computer using Microsoft OneNote to help organize and synthesize their idea in writing. These are also they help in their knowledge construction process. So, next one is students use Excel spreadsheet to add numbers together only. So there is no knowledge construction there. Okay? Students watch a video about how stars are formed. So very passive. That means there is no knowledge construction. And then students use Microsoft OneNote to type an essay they have written. So they type, they don't have what you call uh, synthesize the ideas or organize, we organize the thing again. So there is no knowledge construction. Okay? So the next question again is ICT required for the knowledge construction? So students use the internet to find newspaper articles about a current event from three different countries and analyze how the perspectives are similar or different. So this one, yes, they require it for their knowledge construction. So students use a computer-based simulation to investigate how stars are formed. So yes. Then the third question, students read the local newspaper online to research a current event and analyze three stories they find. 
So they analyze, but what you call you see the difference between the first one and the third one is that they say they use internet. So this one there read the read the current event and analyze the story they find. But over there they read the find the current event from three different countries. You see that fighting from three different countries and do comparison and so on. So the third one it is not uh, used for knowledge construction. Huh? So for one students use a spreadsheet to compute total that they will use to analyze the data. So this one also no. Okay? So lastly, are these students designer of an ICT product? So in computer programming class, students use touch develop to design and program a mobile smartphone app that could help senior citizens in their daily life. Yes, they are developing uh, ICT product because they are using the smartphone to develop something to help the senior citizens. Okay? Students create video of their own interviews with local community members that will air on the local television channel program about our community. So, they have to be used as a product. Okay? Students use internet to research and communicate with local food research producers and then develop an app to help families in their community make more local choices and they buy, when they buy food. So again, you have the, the develop an application. Okay? In computer programming class, students use touch develop to program a mobile smartphone app that pauses phone to vibrate anytime and user take a photo. This is not so as compared to the uh, to the first one, is it? To the first one. Huh? So students play video of their own interview with local community member to submit to the educator for end of year assignment. So this is also uh, not classified as it is an ICT product. Okay? Again, we are using the rubric here to check the level of use of ICT. Okay? This is how we use the rubric. Okay? All the six dimensions we have these types of items for you to check out. Okay? So whenever you you plan your activity for your students and you can always use the rubric to check at what level of collaboration or at what, what level of the use of ICT or self-regulation and, and communication and so on to what you call to have a preliminary assessment of yourself whether you have a, what you call a put in those skills that is needed in the 21st century or not. Okay? So, <coughs> next, talking so much about the use of ICT, so we have here the very important model that we use it to do integration for your ICT into teaching and learning. So, initially, it only involved two components only, that is the content and pedagogy. So initially, it was this model was put up by Schumann. Huh? So it, it means when you want to teach, the educator or the teachers must have the content knowledge. And with the content knowledge is not enough, you must also have the teaching method, the pedagogical knowledge, so that you can teach well in the class. But because of the what you call the technology become part of education. So education technology is becoming more and more important, especially with the what you call introduction of the ICT into teaching and learning. So finally we have the last part that is the technological knowledge. So in order for better integration, so these three knowledge must be integrated well that so that you can teach well in the class. Otherwise you will find that if you don't have enough technological knowledge and then you try to use it, then at the end of the day, it becomes what you call worse in the sense that, let's say for example, you try to use what you call the video online, but it cannot work. And then the students just waiting down there, and then you will see how, what, what is the feeling from the students, right? So it, it means, in fact, in what you call make your lesson worse, okay? So when you want to do the integration, 
make sure make sure that everything works well if you think that the online is not what we call reliable then you better download it okay you better download the video to be on the same side when it is not working then you can use it okay